Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, I have a very, very technical, in-depth, detailed, complicated episode for you today. This is about as in-depth as in-depth gets, and as such, it was actually too in-depth. I decided to scale it back a little bit and make it a little bit more ingestible for you. This episode is How to Shoot Your Weapons Faster, which is a Black Ops 2 PC special, because the advice I'm giving today is more relevant for PC players than it is for console players. Actually, it's much more relevant for PC than console. As such, uh, the gameplay is actually me playing Black Ops Ops 2 on the PC, you're going to notice my field of view is different, the gameplay is going to look smoother, the graphics are slightly better, I know that they're not radically different between console and PC. This is about my 4th, 5th, maybe 6th PC game ever. I don't do as good as I normally do, I think I went 48 and 22, kind of struggling with these starting weapons here, but I did choose the MP7 for a reason. Anyway, let's skip to the part about your weapon shooting faster, and to better explain that, you need to know the engine that Call of Duty runs on. All Call of Duty games since Call of Duty 2 have run on a modified Quake 3 arena engine called the IW engine. Starting with Call of Duty 2, they took the uh, Quake 3 arena engine and very heavily modified it, and Infinity Ward called it the IW or Infinity Ward engine, and this is the Call of Duty engine. They've had uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Black Ops runs on Infinity Ward engi uh, IW engine 3, if I'm not mistaken, because they did their own networking and dolphin diving and their own quirks to it. Modern Warfare 3 actually runs on IW engine 4, if I'm not mistaken. 3 and 4 aren't particularly different. They perform almost identical. It's just that each one of the developers is going slightly different ways with their Call of Duty games. However, the number one thing to know about this engine is that it bases your movement speed, your rate of fire, and some of your networking on snapshots. And in this game, snapshots are your frames, or your frames per second, or FPS if you're a PC gamer. And it does this because that's kind of how the engine was coded from the ground up. The engine was coded way back in 2005 to think with frames. This engine measures almost every dynamic aspect against frames per second in some way. It doesn't really have the ability to compute what could possibly happen between frames. So your frames per second on PC and on console is always the point of reference at which the engine uses to base everything else. As such, if your FPS changes, everything else is going to change. Your move speed, your jump height, your rate of fire, all these things are going to change. Because of this, your weapons never actually fire at the game code's programmed perfect rate of fire. They fluctuate, sometimes rather drastically, depending on your frames per second. This is due to a rounding error in the game because it can't handle information that occurs between frames, so it'll round up frames typically, and rounding up frames causes some weird rounding errors that causes your RPM to fluctuate. In order to explain this better, I made this handy dandy little graph. The blue line on the bottom is your actual rate of fire if the game's rate of fire is 750, which is PDW, MS. SMC, MTAR, a uh, lot of weapons, and the red line on top is your actual rate of fire based on the game's 937, which is MP7, which I'm using uh, the first two shots of the AN94, QBB. These are probably the most two common rates of fire in the game, and as you can see, as your frame rate changes, your rate of fire actually fluctuates drastically. It can get considerably lower than its optimal, and a lot of times never actually reaches that optimal rate of fire due to rounding. However, it does on the 750 because that's a nice even number. The 937 doesn't really work that way. And I know this is a lot of information to just ingest and take my word for it, so I put my RPM calculations on a Google document and I kind of uploaded it in a way to where it can't be edited, but you can look at the calculations and you can look at the game's rate of fire uh, depending on what kind of FPS you're running. That's a link down in the description. I would very highly recommend that you open that up, check it out, take a look around. I also linked down in the description a link to the Din Kearson forum post where most of this information is coming from, and you can see the source of the information and how exactly I did the calculation in that spreadsheet. Doing this, you can compare your PC's rate of fire to what's going on here and try to find an optimal level. The Xbox and PlayStation typically run between 50 and 58 FPS, depending on how much is going on. On my testing, on my end, I found that my Xbox runs at 58 FPS, which is very close to the promised 60 FPS, but if I go into Ground War and there's lots of smoke grenades and kill streaks and crazy stuff going on, it'll drop down to about 50, which causes some fluctuation in consoles, but the better part of the fluctuation is on PC. If you're on console and you want to shoot faster, uh, not shoot fa yeah, shoot faster, run higher, jump further, you're going to want to avoid big crazy lobbies, you're going to want to avoid smoke grenades and anything that causes a lot of particle effects, but in general you're going to have to stretch your console very, very hard to make this change. Like I said, this is mostly an episode for PC gamers. As you may have also noticed on that graph, the fluctuations aren't necessarily in sync with each other. There are places where a faster firing gun will perform very well, and a slower firing gun will perform worse, and vice versa. So I actually made a list of what I called optimal FPSs. I'm pulling up a little piece of paper right here if you hear any noise. 
and that is posted down there in the description. I made a list of best frame rates and I made a list of normal frame rates that are also okay, depending on your PC settings. This list is based simply on the 750 and 937 RPM weapons because they are by far the most common in the game. However, if you're using other weapons that don't fire at those rates, you can check the in-depth episodes. If you're curious, you may want to adjust it to something different to the weapon set that suits you best. Or if you're recreating this based on the den post and my little stat sheet or whatever, you can put in your own formula, your own function, and make your own optimal FPSs. Just have fun with it. It's relatively straightforward high school math. And the best advice I can give if you don't want to try and lock your FPS to anything in particular is that anything over 160 FPS will be good. After you get over 160 FPS, there are a lot of little sweet spots that start showing up where you get closer to those optimal rates of fire. You saw that graph kind of converging. I mean, if you got up to like 600 FPS, I'm sure it would be great. But the PC version is capped at 200 FPS. 200 FPS is actually a very good one if you want to run that too. What I actually tried to do earlier today was to find a program that would lock in my FPS at, one of, at some of these ideas numbers and I could not find a program that would reliably do that. I'm assuming that you PC gamers do this more than me. You know more than me. You know the programs. You know your graphic card settings. You're very smart people. If you want to try and lock your frame rate to any of these um, particular frame rates, you go ahead and do that. I don't think there are console commands in Black Ops 2 like there were in previous games because I know people did do this in previous games. So um, I'm just going to leave it to you to solve that puzzle. I don't want to delve into things and screw up my new computer the day I get it. And the other thing I wanted to talk about in this episode Episode is your maximum run speed and jump heights. These occur at 125 FPS. This information is based on what's called the COD sweet spot, which is something that also comes from the Quake 3 engine and how it handles physics and gravity and that sort of thing. This comes from a very, very old post that I have saved and bookmarked. I just haven't had a time to speak about it relevantly. It's mostly from Call of Duty 2, but the engine has not changed since then and I don't believe that the gravity or physics have been changed in the Call of Duty engine either, so they should still be relevant. My recommendation is, of course, you experiment it at your will, but your maximum run speed and jump height will occur at 125 FPS. 200 FPS is also a sweet spot, and there are a few other uh, near-optimal places that also line up with some of these best frame rates. You can kind of compare and contrast. That link is also down there in the description. There's a lot of links in the description. My final recommendation on this, on if you're playing PC, what you want to set your FPS is, uh, probably somewhere between 121 and 124 and I know the game has a built-in option where you can lock it at 120. 120 causes some funny rounding you can check that in the in the whole big spreadsheet down there so it's really not optimal unless you know when you lock it at 120 it's going to be really at 121 or you want to set your settings to where it's going to hang around 120 to 124. You can't really do 125 because that actually makes your gun shoot slower but 124 will give you near uh, optimum jumping and it, it, it's a good region to be in. That's my final recommendation, but there there is quite a lot of information to take in, quite a lot of math to do, quite a lot of spreadsheets, and I believe that many of you are smarter than me and more capable of using Microsoft Excel and making your own decisions. I'm kind of like throwing the information out there and hoping that you make some reasonable judgments for it, and I hope that you don't tear up your computers or your config files trying to do anything funny based off this information. Well, guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful, and I hope the information that I have presented to you is correct. I had a very short period of time to master this, and I'm way out of my element here, so I hope I did it right. In the previous episode, you can check out my Hammer review. You can click that box. It'll open in a new window. In the next epi episode, you can check out Quick Draw versus Dexterity. This is kind of a tip that a subscriber sent in that I honestly haven't quite followed up on all the way, so I don't even know what's going to happen in that episode. As always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.